Hey, welcome to another monthly studio report for All is Fair and Destinaire and Broken Hammer Games. I am the founder, CEO, a uh, lot of different jobs in this company, and also person that brings you these monthly reports every month to show us some of our progress and what we're up to at Broken Hammer Games. Uh, so, yeah, Maze Adventures done. Um, it was a good month for our production, not a great month to try and get the video we wanted to do made for the Tyranoke um, community. Yeah, there was uh, some problems with uh, Mike's uh, machine. His uh, computer hard drive all of a sudden decided, oh, I am going to go on all of you. So his hard drive collapsed and he had to spend a bit of uh, like a week or two trying to get his whole system back up, trying to diagnose it, and now he's been trying to rebuild all his notes, rebuild everything, so uh, let's just get this out of the way first, that hopefully we're going to be getting to in June, it's still on our list to do, we're still going to do it, I'm still committed to do it, uh, it's probably going to be a video I'll be basically narrating and kind of doing most of the work, and then I'm going to toss it to Mike, or at least check his notes and kind of go over what he found, what he discovered, but it's just, we did not anticipate a hard drive crash in the middle of this, so apologies for the delay on this. Those of you that are waiting for our little guy, waiting for at least some tips and tricks on how to get this to work, uh, it's going to be just a bit longer. Apologies, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, so let's go ahead and get right into it now. Um, yeah, uh, art production was actually pretty good. Con, I mean, I was probably towards the end of last month, part of last month, and going into this month, I was just scrambling to find uh, an artist to do the cityscape because of new con schedule. And I think last month we did the uh, vlog update that was mentioning that, yeah, um, we couldn't find anybody, so I reached out to Khan again, asked how he's doing, how his schedule's going. He's like, oh yeah, I just got off from my overtime work. He doesn't have all this extra work to do. So it was actually really awesome. He was like jumped right into it. And we do have some uh, images to show. Uh, some of the stuff, is, actually one of the items is definitely not gonna be on the uh, blog itself. You can only get it through the blog here. And I'm going to do a little teaser of the big cityscape, well, of progress anyways. One of the concepts that we're doing on the cityscape for Eddings Cove. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into some of these um, art concepts and stuff we're going to be reviewing. So this is um, one of the concepts we've been working on for the mansion at uh, Eddings Cove where the Baron's Mansion is. Um, behind that is probably the first glimpse of the Eastern Ridge Mountains that we're looking at because we're setting it up against the Eastern Ridge Mountains. We want to do a very nice view of the mountains as they're going up into the up uh, towards Lord's Leap and towards the big uh, capital city and such. So this is kind of like the mansion grounds we're working at. It is not is not the, the final. This is just a very early concept of how the design, what we're working with, is going to be. I kind of debated whether to go ahead and reveal this now, but when I looked at it, it was like, it is kind of a cool shot. It is still work in progress. There is some changes that are going to be taking place in this shot, um, but this is basically part of our progress on what we're doing with Eddings Cove because we have to build we're actually having to build concepts piece by piece so that Khan can build the whole thing as a whole because uh, there's too many shots where we have like certain buildings or certain things that have to look a certain way for the story and to throw those all into into what Khan's trying to do and Khan's just like <laughs> his mind's just like I need help, I need you guys to kind of maybe draw out some stuff. And so we've just been tackling things bit by bit. Georgie has actually come on board with us a bit and he's uh, he's helping kind of outline his own ideas. And so it's kind of a collab piece that we're working on for Eddings Cove, at least doing the whole cityscape. Uh, as the writer of it, I'm 
tossing out ideas, they're tossing ideas back when we've actually found some ideas that Khan's mentioned that would actually work better. So I'm going to have to go back and edit a few bits of dialogue and story. But yeah, this is just a very early teaser of what eventually is going to be Edding's Cove. This is, there's a lot more. There's way more. I mean, this, this is just the very tip of where the Baron is. And there's still a city that's underneath everything. So that is still to come. <clears throat> So I may to be make you know I'm probably going to be teasing little bits and pieces out as we go so you will be able to see some of the city getting like concepted as it comes out the final image we will reserve for uh, Raven's Prayer so expect to see that then although most likely what's going to happen is Raven's Prayer is going to release and you'll see it there and then we'll start bringing that image into some of our backgrounds and stuff it's expected to be a really good one so that's a little preview for that uh, character models um, Georgie did do a surprise reveal for me he finished a character model that was one of our supporting cast members this is just a little minor character <coughs> excuse me and he finished that and uh, that was kind of he finished it real fast this is just some one of our minor little add-on characters he had some good good ideas for the part so you will see him in Raven's Prayer a few times, not as much as some of the other characters. And then moving on to Project 2, I'm just going to reveal, I mean we did, Ingrid did some awesome work on one of our concepted characters, and this is just, uh, this is early sketch, early sketch line art of um, him and how he's going to look, and then I'm just going to go through it real quick, and then Ingrid did a major revision, did the, the more formal line art. She, she switched the sword, she switched the horn and such, and then she did do the first color pass, which is you can see on the blog, but here's the full model. And now this does not have the shading, this does not have texturing done yet, this is just flat color base before we move on from there, and may do a reveal on that character for the next month uh, when he gets done. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, and we are still working, we're also looking for a dedicated background artist for Project 2. So if you happen to catch this, you know somebody that likes to draw backgrounds, definitely shoot, shoot us an email. Would appreciate it. Uh, I did I did look through a couple of potential ones to hire. I like some of their background styles, but it's, it's kind of like when to contact them. We're not in a super big rush on Project 2 right now, so... I am just really kind of researching as much as I possibly can right now to find the best background artist for that project, uh, especially for the price and the cost and how much money out of it, because that is part of game development, is like how do you deal with the money side of things, so you do have to, I mean, I'm doing it for free, uh, a lot of our original team kind of did things for free because we just loved Guns of Icarus so much, and we wanted to work on this thing. This was a dream project for us. And then it's kind of like reality starts to sit in as it goes along. As the project goes along, it's like, oh, you know, I'm kinda, it would be nice to make some money for this because you got to eat. And so yeah, that's a, that is a reality that we deal with. Although now that we have Dust and Air, the first part released, there's some money that's coming in. It's it's helping. It's helping at this stage. We're not like absolutely but like blockbuster level type stuff but yeah it is it is offsetting some of the costs at times that we're having to do and of course all the money that we're making off of dust and air is going right back into development so there's not like a lot of excess except for probably handling state taxes and all that other stuff which is another thing that if you're a small game developer you're probably realizing oh my gosh we have to pay all these massive taxes per year and all this stuff like, yeah that is just the cost of doing business, and it's worse if you're in California, which we kind of are to a certain extent. <laughs> so, uh, June is going to continue on with our Edding Cove cityscape. Um, we do have a major background piece that is going to be... Um, right now we're looking at trying to get the rest of that mansion that you saw in the teaser done I mean we're gonna do probably the final Georgie's gonna do the final and then it's gonna transfer back over to Khan Khan's gonna finish up the concepts on that and then we're gonna wrap it all up and get the final done so 
We're going to be building a little bit faster now on some of those backgrounds since we have the active concepts coming in from Khan and Georgie at the same time and they can kind of work off each other and we can we can flush those out. Uh, character development um, probably going to be continuing. I can think about how many characters we have in development right now. There is a few we're looking at at least possibly one more maybe two more during the month we'll see how that's going to go because we're trying to shift with the cityscape and the backgrounds and other stuff there um, eventually once all the characters are done we got to shoot things over to winks for uh, getting the expressions facial expressions some like the smiles and the frowns all fixed so that is going to be coming in the days ahead we're, we're getting closer towards that and then Georgie's going to take it again. We also talked a little bit during the month about the alternate clothing that we're going to have because certain characters do have alternate clothing and that's for characters that already have models. And um, we're probably, what we're looking at doing right now is just doing like one alternate character model with a different clothing style and working on the expressions, making it match. So, I mean, we originally thought about, we're going to do like all the poses, all the characters, we're just going to drop on a different like um, clothing on top of the model and it, when we tried to do that when we looked at that it was like it wasn't looking right it wasn't looking good enough so we're probably just going to do a new character model with a different outfit and go from there um, and see yeah we're getting closer to getting Raven's Prayer um, well, it is already partially in engine, but we're going to have to update a bunch of things because it was put in engine probably at least three years ago. And so now there's been some updates and we're going to be released. The release schedule is going to be different. So we kind of have to use our little chaos converter tool and drop it back into engine again and just kind of re rebuild a few things. Um, I am considering possibly a new UI for Raven's Prayer. That's another thing on the list of stuff that I'm considering to do. I haven't mentioned it in the blog, but it would be on the blog. That if we're, they're considering something like that. It may just be a color palette swap. So we'll see. I need to look at a few of those options first going ahead. See if Georgie wants to do that too. What We will talk about that maybe in June as we move forward. Um, uh, overall, it is encouraging. Progression on the project is is increasing. Uh, um, June, summer, we're looking at things increasing some more as we go into it. Um, we will have some announcements probably related to the project in July or August. I will say that in advance. We are some doing some major discussions regarding uh, we want to do and I think we're getting closer to making a formal decision on the DLC and how we're going to do that ju judging from what we've learned from not only the PC version but also Google and iOS and putting that all together and I mean this our decision would be different if Tyranno had kind of kept things going better uh, that's the problem I mean when they originally did it we had the understanding yeah they were going to do stuff to make it possible for the DLCs and now it's like our plans are having to shift unfortunately and as far as the iOS port goes uh, it's still coming I'm probably gonna have to be hiring out another iOS programmer and we're gonna be looking at a different framework because we're, we're trying to basically make the framework that Tyranno built for it we're trying to make everything work with modern iOS and there are issues with that and that is the problem. So basically what I have to do is I have to go find a programmer that works with different frameworks and looks at what we've got and can make it work. So I am already out putting some feelers out, seeing if I can find anybody to uh, at, at least get that to function so we can get the iOS port going. Um, and get that piece together. So, yeah, we're looking for somebody with a lot of experience in iOS app uh, development, and I am touching a few few bases. So we'll see. But anyways, that is it for the month of May. Um, yeah, look forward to June. Look forward to the Steam Summer Sale. It's coming, I believe, at the end of June, going into July. So be sure to look for that. Dustin Air will be on sale, and. You are welcome to wait for the sale, or if you'd like to get it now, get it now. It helps us either way.
So thank you for joining and see you in the skies. Jenny.